Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here and ready to go for another weekly recruiting update for you. Probably feels like we've had a number of recruiting notes already this week, and that's really because we've, we have. Over the weekend, basketball had two commitments, so we had stuff going on there. Football gets Dylan Edwards, and then football also adds into their, their pool of high school talent in the class of 2025. And another football transfer, it's it's nonstop right now for K-State football. But this is getting close again to being another really busy time of the year. We're inching closer to official visits kicking off. We know that K-State is in the midst of trying to add to what is currently a two-member class. So with our uh, recruiting update, before we get into specifics, what are some of the, the general notes that people should know on K-State's approach right now when it comes to high school recruiting? Honestly, I think that what people should know, and I know you're probably all getting sick of me saying this, but k really close on a handful of guys to the point where it's kind of a race to see who would be the next commitment. I think that we have kind of a good idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if somebody jumps some of the people that we're talking about. So I think that it's just more about staying patient. I mean, the 2025 class, just in general, the commitments are still pretty low across the board in the Big 12, so I'm not too worried. And, and I still think that they're on track to be at the 10 commitments by July because I, I just think that they're in a lot of a, a good spot for a lot of different guys to where I wouldn't be surprised if June is just nuts at this point from how it's looking. Yeah, I mean, you, you can go and, and go to on three and you can look at it by conference, but in terms of total commits, I mean, there are still uh, what ends up being seven schools that have four commitments or less right now. So it's not like a ton of people are loading up. Um, and those schools would be KU, Utah, Colorado, BYU, Houston, K-State, and Arizona. So it's nothing crazy. The teams at the top, totally different way of doing things right now. Arizona State is obviously playing catch-up. Uh, they have 11 commits. Texas Tech leads the Big 12 with 12 currently. Uh, and then UCF and Oklahoma State up there with nine. So it's just all over the board, different types of programs, different mottos and philosophies when it comes to how they recruit. So there's a lot of intricacies with it. And something we haven't really talked about with this 2025 class, but I, it got me thinking because we've discussed how many guys are going to have the option and ability to come back next season. As we sit here at the start of May, what should the expected number of high school players in this 2025 class look like for K-State? I think that putting a, an exact number is probably just tough right now because just like we've seen with basketball, it's just so easy for guys to enter the transfer portal, even in football. But I, I think that it'll be a bigger class than last cycle. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like between 18 and 20. Like it, it just feels like that's probably the number with the amount of official visits that are already scheduled with the guys that they're still offering. So I, I think that 18 to 20 is probably the number that you're looking at. Yeah. And K-State, even last year, they, they got it up to 15 in the, the class of 24, which at various points seemed like 15 might be a tough number to get to, but they got there. So that's uh that's good for people to kind of understand and how they formulate this. So for K State to get to that number, though, they're going to start have to add, having to add to this pool. Uh, who who could be in the running to be next? I know Commit Watch went earlier this week over at KSO, but uh, who do you have your eye on as a couple of guys that could be the next ones to pop for K State? Uh, Will Kimna, an offensive lineman from Jefferson City, Missouri, is probably who I would have as the leader in the clubhouse right now. I like where K State stands for him, and really have since he took his visit in March. To the point where I I wouldn't have been surprised if he would have been the second one in the class. I just think that K State's really really honing in on him and uh, trying to get him to commit and trying to commit get him to commit pretty soon as well. So I think that he's probably the safest bet for next commitment. But another guy like Lucas Algaier, who K State's been targeting for a really long time, uh, jumping him wouldn't surprise me. But Kimna probably the leader in the clubhouse at this point. That's good to know. You mentioned there a couple of offensive linemen uh, with how this this class is starting to play out. 
what do you think the the number offensive line wise ends up looking like for K State? Because uh, the with Kimna and Allgaier there, is that we know there were a ton last year. Is that just like a, those were the top two guys are looking at, and that's who it would be, or is there going to be room beyond that? I think those are probably two of the top three guys on the board right now. The third probably being Brock Heath uh, from Blue Valley Northwest. I think that three is probably the right number. It's just taking a lot in the the previous class means that this one will be a little bit smaller, even to the point where I, I think that you've seen some offensive linemen that K-State have, has really honed in on kind of being told to shy away from going to K-State from other schools because of the amount of offensive linemen that they took last year. So I, I would say probably two or three is the right number. And, and especially if they can, if they can land Kimna, Keith and Algar. I mean, that's still a really good haul coming off of last year as well. All right. So moving along from the offensive line and how it shapes up there, probably the most common running back name we've heard is Montario Elston. Uh, where where do things sit there right now? I think that with Montario Elston, it's probably a matter of when and not if he commits to K-State, even with his home state or school of Arkansas getting involved. The the number one school that we just keep hearing about is K-State. And K-State, I think, has had a pretty comfortable lead since January. Uh, his official visit will take place uh, the last week in the last weekend of June, uh, June 21st through the 23rd. Remember, the calendar is a little funky this year with how uh, the dates fall. So June will be hectic, but June also doesn't have as many weekends. So, which is why you're seeing, uh, I believe that there's six official visits lined up for June 21st, uh, seven for June 14th through the 16th. And then at least right now, just four for June 7th through the 9th. But I, I expect those numbers to continue to grow. So with June being a little bit of a crunch with dates, I think that we're going to see some pretty heavy official visit weekends. And I mean, it's, it's always tough to peg, but with the amount of guys that K-State gets in for an official visit, what number of those guys do you think end up being a K-State player in the, the coming years? I think that the expectation is that they can probably get most of the guys that they're going after for and have scheduled an official visit for, because I mean, those, those are the guys that I keep saying that they're really close on like Monterey Wellston and like, uh, Will Kimna, like Lucas Allgaier, a, a player that I think has gone a little bit under the radar, but I think that Casey can really make a push for on his official visit is Leo Almanza, who goes to Byron Nelson High School in Texas, but originally is a St. Louis native and also has a strong relationship with Dylan Duff. And I believe that Lucas Allgaier knows him as well. So I think that that's another guy that you can really keep in mind for that June 7th weekend which is turning out to be kind of, it's just funny how things get scheduled and there's no coincidence, coincidences in recruiting. And I believe that. So having all the St. Louis guys or former St. Louis guys come June 7th through the 9th, I think is a really strong indication that K-State really wants to close out on the other three as well, because Dylan Duff is also taking his, his official visit that weekend. Yeah, a lot getting lined up for K-State, and uh, if you, you want to go take a track of all that, Drew has them up over on KSO as well to follow along with everything there. So with all that in mind, is there anything else on the high school recruiting front right now for K-State that uh, people should be aware of? I think that the thing that has kind of gone unnoticed, even though I've tried to point it out a few times, is that it seems like K-State wants two running backs in this cycle which I think that that kind of leads you to believe that they are probably anticipating this being DJ Giddens' last season before he goes to the NFL. So I think that that's something to really kind of keep in mind too. Like River Peppers and uh, I believe it's a DJ Duggar also have official visits to K-State scheduled. So I think that that's something that people need to just be aware of like that. And I think that it's smart to be preparing for that because especially with a running back, I have no qualms for somebody wanting to leave early and go to the NFL. So if they 
if DJ Giddens does go to the NFL, they don't want to be cut off guard. And I think that's just a smart thing to do and a smart business decision for K-State. Yeah, and it, it feels like for the last handful of years now, well, honestly, really since this staff got here, they've been playing catch-up in the running back department where they came in and there were no running backs on the team. They had to kind of fill the gaps that they could with James Gilbert and Jordan Brown. And so then it was like, all right, now we got to establish some depth here. And, and they did a little bit, but it was just really tough to do. And then some of the guys that you thought you brought in to establish depth ended up leaving for, you know, whatever else, because they thought bigger and better things were out there. Newsflash, there wasn't. <laughs> like, those guys were FCS bound or whatever. And K-State now trying to get back into that spot where, uh, you know, they, they did okay with the running back haul last year. It helps to bring in a guy like Dylan Edwards. That's essentially like getting a running back in a, in a class. So they're starting to, to put themselves in a good spot. But like you said, DJ Giddens is a guy that I think here on KSO, we've been talking about for the last year now, Hey, he, he's going to have the opportunity to go to the NFL. It seems like after this coming year, you have to be prepared for that. And that's where the staff seems to be. Yeah. I just think that it's a smart thing to be aware of and just be cognizant of, because I, I think that it's a real possibility. And, I think that, like you said, Casey has been kind of playing catch up numbers wise. The, the quality has always been there, but to the point where I think that the quality has kind of scared some of the other running backs that they had that were depth guys off. Like Joe Irvin comes to mind when Deuce Vaughn was doing his thing, that that was probably a guy that you wish would have stayed and he probably wishes he would have stayed. Uh, and then you're seeing like, the running back room was pretty depleted this uh, past off season after DJ Giddens did what he did. So, I mean, I, I think that it's kind of a hand in hand thing of when you have a really, really good running back, that's an NFL guy. It's hard to keep everybody else around, but I think that K state's running back room is one of the strongest on the team, despite its numbers. Yeah, that's a, it's a good point, man. Uh, they're, they're trying to add to it. And you also uh, just recently today, have a, a new update with a, a running back recruit on KSO. So head over there, check it out. Get all the K-State football recruiting news that you need at K-State Online. You can find us at On3 and right here on the YouTube. We will be back again tomorrow where we will talk transfer portal with football a little bit more. They've already gotten off to a pretty good start through the last seven days. They got Dylan Edwards and then they got Alec Marenko, so they filled some needs a second running back behind DJ Giddens, and then a linebacker. Where else could K-State be headed? We'll have that for you tomorrow right here on K-State Online.